What is good? We are back for another round of Rookie Profiles. Today, we got Kadarius Tony, six foot, 193, a.k.a. Young Joker. My that's man's his, out. That's his rap name or his uh, AOL Instant Messenger yeah, handle my, from 2000. I, my man's out here running around with an AIM screen name as his rap name. That's what I used to hit up the chicks on it on the on the AIM, yeah. Spelled <laughs> spelled exactly like I would have spelled it. Y U N G Joka. He's not the joke. He's not Djokovic. So, Mm-mm. you know. Anyway, so he's from Eight Mile, Alabama. Not to be confused with Eight Mile, Detroit, Detroit, uh, yeah, Michigan. Attended, yeah, attended Blount High School, where he was a starting quarterback and was extremely productive. Won a six A uh, championship. Is that uh, Blount or Blunt? Well, I mean, I'll, I'm going with Blount, but we could go Blunt. Well, I had a buddy in uh, high school, and his last name was spelled like that, and it was pronounced Blunt. I mean, you, you sometimes you know Legarrett, right? Legarrett yeah. Blount. <laughs> so obviously he goes into Florida as a quarterback and then transitions to a wide receiver. I believe he was a three-star recruit. We get right into the metrics. The Dominators twenty-three point seven percent in the thirty-first percentile, as my daughter would say. <laughs> Breakout age twenty-one point six, twenty-four Holy percentile. Double- That's <laughs> old. That's old. Yeah, he, so, so we're we'll, done. He's not good. Well, I, I mean, we could wrap it up, uh, but we'll, we'll, anal- it's safe to say the analytics community does not like Tony. No, that can't be good for him. So we'll, we'll, we're about to get into all that in a second. Let's stick with uh, the the good stuff. The pro day he comes in at six foot one ninety three. Um, it's got fairly average arm length and hand size, but the vertical is elite at the ninetieth percentile. The broad jumps elite in the 99th percentile. Uh, the forty yard dash. <laughs> Is anywhere from four three eight to four four one, eighty uh, first percentile. So fast, even if you round that up to like a four five or four four five or four four six, still really fast guy. Looks fast on tape. So those sure. things add up. Um, and the three cone drill, six point eight eight, under seven seconds, and sixty fourth uh, percentile there. So great pro right. day for him, showing off his athleticism, which uh, again pops on the field. Yeah, if you watch this guy on tape, those numbers make sense. Like he's an electric guy, and every time he's touching the ball, you're on the edge of your seat because you feel like he's about to bust one off right those i love i love watching those guys and uh so he's gonna he's gonna get bumped down the rankings a little bit and we'll talk about where he goes uh in in actual adp and stuff like that uh because of those bad analytical uh performances or metrics performances in the in the breakout age and the dominator and all those kind of things the counting stats wise he only has the big 2020 uh which is the reason that you know you right. don't love him because it's a senior year it, you, you know the idea behind simmons is, is old <laughs> is you want the guy who's going to be young and productive beating the guys who are older in college and being dominating targets. Uh, and if you're a senior and this is the first time you break out, you know, not as technically likely to say, Hey, this guy's going to be great at the next level because it took him so long to become the men amongst boys uh, to really break out. This right. case is, is maybe has, has some other parts and pieces to it. Uh, again, the 2020 is 84 targets, 70 receptions, uh, 977 yards, seven touchdowns, uh, 14 yards per catch. Uh, the Yaks, 477. So, <laughs> nominate this man. Yak of the year. Nominate him. Class uh, Yak. Only two drops in there, so that's pretty strong. Uh, oh, yeah. Only it. three career drops, so that's really strong. Contested catch rate is 42.9 and uh, 7.6 targets a game. Not a ton mm-hmm. of contested catches targets, uh, but it, he's always he's open, a little, so it's hard. And he plays in the slot, which right. we'll get here in a minute. But. A little bit more of a slot guy. Uh, so, But you, you see know. him come into his own here in 2020, right? Right, you, you see which those is a negative, I guess, if you're looking at it that way. Well, I mean, there's there's injuries to account for, right? He did miss some games in 2017, mm-hmm. uh, shoulder and shin injuries. And then the 2019 was his was the year he was supposed to, to, to break out and be the man there in Florida. But he... He was in and out of the lineup basically all year long with a shoulder injury, only played seven games, only had 15 touches. And so he was forced into coming back to to college for that senior year because he needed to he needed to be healthy and show that he could produce on the field because he was known as a super athletic guy and everybody was expecting him to to be good. And he just didn't 
it didn't pan out until 2020. And that's, that's why he has a late breakout age. That's why he doesn't have a good college dominator. Cause he just, he just wasn't getting the production for various reasons until 2020. Right. And some of those reasons, like we touched on in the beginning, a dual threat quarterback coming in. So he was putting the team on his back with his athleticism. That's all popping off. So he doesn't necessarily have the pedigree and the time spent, the reps at the receiver position. So, right. you know, that could be a little bit of transition coming in. So, you know, you could see Absolutely. that maybe take it a little bit. Positions? And, Come on. And uh, so, you know, the only big year that he has, you see an 86.4% slot percentage. Uh, so a lot of usage in the slot in that 2020. Um, and then in the 19 games that he played around the same percentage. Uh, so b- been projected mostly as a slot guy. Seems like where that's where he fits, where you can get the most out of his dual threadedness of that quarterback, that athleticism really popping off the charts, get him in that middle of the field. Um, and what was a delightful surprise was going back and watching the tape and seeing how much power he took with some of that uh elite athleticism that he shows on the field. So he has that, that great burst and quickness, but he also packs a punch that was, you know, right. Exciting for me to see, right. He's not only very shifty and slithery, but he does have an element of power. And that combination is just awesome to watch. Like he, when he has the ball, he's like a running back. Like he has contact balance. He has violent cuts. He gets downhill and his mentality is to get up field and, and fall forward. And he doesn't just rely on his athleticism to continuously bounce it outside. It was just a really joy. To, and, and, it's a joy to watch. You see, you see his Jersey being ripped a ton. Cause these boys just can't, they can't get him. Like they can't get yeah. him. I think like you, you mentioned it before that, that, that player that you turn on and he just starts popping off the screen at you where you're bursting, where he seems like every time he touches it, he's, he could be bursting at the seam and you're a little bit or guys that, you know, I, I start to target, even though guys may be pushing them down because of that dominator and late breakout age, which again, the, the, the transfer from playing a different position. And then, you know, maybe he wasn't necessarily the most, grown up and mature guy coming into uh, from high school into college, you know, he got, got, did a couple little knuckleheadish things and I don't know the guy. So I don't really know, you know, these are just reported stories, but you know, it to maybe it took him a little while to, to wise up and mature up and let's not get things twisted. Like let's not pretend that this Florida Gators offense was producing some high, crazy amount of offense for any year that he was there outside of this summer 19, where Felipe Franks finally gets out of the picture. Cause that guy sucks. And then you get Kyle Trask entered in and now he has a full season in this 2020 season. And this year you saw a Florida Gators team that was like, Oh man, They've always had some defense, but finally they could score some points. Look out. This is this is a this is a hot team right here. Right. And it was it's crazy to watch him when they got Kyle Pitts and and Tony out there just doing work in 2020. You could see why they were basically a few plays away from from being a top four team and contending for a national championship. Um, several things I want to touch on that you brought up, you know, the slot percentage and and how much you played in the slot and how that, that caters to his game. I do think that he could, he could play outside. He has the traits to develop into a good route runner. Um, you know, he's, he's fast, but he, he has hesitation off the line of scrimmage and he, he delays and varies his play speed. Um, this, the hip sinkage at the top of his route to be able to explode out of breaks and, and he just gets open. So I, I think he has the traits to win against anyone on the field, anywhere on the field. Um, and, and, and tracking the ball is good. He's got late hands and stacking ability and, and good like hands before rarely ever drops a ball. And so, you know, I think he could do a lot more, but, the, but the, the playing in the slot is awesome. And, and he is a versatile guy, right? He had uh, 66 carries, I believe averaged 8.8 yards per carry. Right. right. Had 400, 580 rushing yards. Um, they were giving him plenty of handoffs. I love seeing that. And then, he, you know, being that quarterback, there were some trick plays in there. He threw Throw a, a little wrinkle downs, in. Right. Sure. And then he also is a special teamer. He's got oh, some, yeah. some return yardage. So these are ways to get him on the field, ways to see him good and and and, and productive and, and ways for him to pop and that athleticism to really burst and, and show you, man. And so this is a guy, I think, who, whose, whose value can only go up as this offseason moves along. Right. And I, I agree. And, you know, to me, this all kind of boils back to, I want to compare him to a guy like Brandon Ayuk of last year. Now, not, necess- not necessarily saying stylistically, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised once I got into it a little more because I wasn't initially going in kind of comparing them as a player, just as the, uh, 
stigma around him. Like it seemed right. like late breakout age. Right. It seemed like all of the draft expert guys were telling you, Hey, Ayuk is somebody that people are holding in high regard and could be a first round pick where the experts on draft Twitter didn't really have anything to say about Ayuk. He ends up being a middle second round pick. And, you know, Tony kind of seems the same way. You're the, the draft experts are kind of saying, Hey, there's a chance that this guy goes in the first round. The, the the NFL, they, they seem to like him. They're getting a lot of good feedback from him. And, you know, we you don't want to just disregard those things. And then even when I went in that in that round there in the first round, she still didn't garner the respect. And, and basically now what you're trying to do is you're trying to find this year's who's going to be that middle second chase Claypool and Brandon Ayuk that got pushed down from everybody else after all the other receivers got taken and are, are the good players that are left that are just being pushed down for no reason. Cause Ayuk is very similar in uh, the profile and, and the way he came to be as Kadarius Tony is here. I mean, he went, Ayuk went the Juco route. So, you know, again, that's going to lead to a late breakout age, really only the one productive se uh, senior season at Arizona state. Uh, Tony breaks out in his senior season, uh, similar grades by Lance Zerline on from the NFL network, which, you know, you can hate on Lance if you want, but the guy's been at it for a while and he, he probably knows what he's doing a little better than most of us, even though if you don't agree with some of the things in his write up, Right. Uh, and he has access that other people don't. He's talking to the teams. He's right. talking to general managers. He has that 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 inside scoop that the rest of us just it's impossible to have. Right. So I do. We all we do all of our own work. And then, you know, I like to go read those things because he does have that access and see what he sees. And he's a professional and I'm not. Um, Lance Zerline had I scored at uh, a six point three eight and uh, Tony scored at a six. Point three six, so very similar scores in the player. Um, they're very similar in builds. Uh, they're both listed at five twelve, um, <laughs> uh, and then you know around the two hundred. Ix a little heavier, Tony a little lighter. Uh, similarity then again kind of comes into the write ups, which is what I was kind of a little surprised about. Both great returners, like you mentioned there, um, and but then you have the athletic profile of advantage Tooney. That athletic profile is really good. Now, now there was good parts and pieces, and we didn't get to see all the athletic testing from Ayuk, um, but Tony's got a really strong athletic profile. And then when you get down to it, both of these players stylistically are yak kind of players. They're better with the ball in their hands. Manufacture them some ways to get it, and then let them do their work. Now Ayuk probably projected as a little bit more of an outside guy. So maybe a little bit more versatility of what you can get from him. Um, but then, you know, Ayuk lands then in a, in a perfect scenario in a great situation where the Niners are pretty much perennial, the leader in yak. They design plays to get their guys in open space with room to run. And they nailed their evaluation and the player fit, which is something that a lot of teams don't do a great job of. Now the Niners have been afforded the luxury of having the same coaching staff for there for a while and figuring those guys out. They've had their share of misses, but Ayuk and Debo, and Kittle have been guys who fit meld perfectly into that. And we talk about it all the time. You got to have a scheme fit. And yeah, you talk about it pretty heavily, but Tony's got to going to be a guy that needs, uh, you know, the scheme fit in there. Uh, he's going to need to be projected. Now it's not to say that he can't thrive in a, in a shitty offense. I think he's does have, you know, electricity and the versatility to be a decent fantasy player. in any, if you would have told me, Justin Jefferson's not going to, you know, need, didn't need a, uh, a great ecosystem to be as great as he was, uh, you know, the first year he made a liar out of everybody thinking that he just needed to be in the slot. He was great. He could have been anywhere. So he didn't really need one. And, but Ayuk lands in a perfect spot. And if Tony could land in a good spot, I think that could really uh, bring the best out of him. I agree. And I think that's how you'll see the quickest return or, or jump in value. But at the same time, you know, we're not talking about a guy that you have to take in the first round of your rookie draft, right? Right. This is a guy, we'll go ahead and get to the ADP and, and yeah. the expert rankings uh, provided by DLF here. He's the expert in the rankings. They got him as wide receiver eight um, in the ADP. He's wide receiver 10 at 21 overall. So we're looking at a late second round type player. I think I have him about wide receiver seven now. Um, if you want to take Tylon Wallace over, sure. sorry, Tylon Wallace over him, I can't argue with you. And and depending Agreed. on where he lands, I could see myself doing the same thing. But for now, I think Tony gets the edge there. But but we're not talking about a top five guy. We're not talking about a guy you have to spend a lot of capital on. You can still take a running back in the first round and have a great swing at a receiver with ridiculous ceiling in the right. late second round. Like I'm all over that shit. Yeah. 
hey, if you if you want to use the metrics and the analytics to solely make your decision, that's fine. And you're going to write this guy off. That's cool. You're I, probably I, not and, making and it maybe, this deep. And this maybe video, I, maybe though. maybe you're maybe you're right and I'm wrong. But like, I'm not going to write this guy off just because he had a late breakout age. Right. We didn't um, do it and, with Iuke. We were all pro, we were very pro Iuke over here, and, and we're not going to let that dictate this either. Like you said, you're navigating through the first round. You don't have to spend the first round capital. You're trying to find the good guys in the second round who have this good profile. And yeah, the the dominator and the breakout aren't great, but the the other stuff is good and the tape's good. And you know right. they're all parts to the pieces. And basically, the analytical chase down from what I can decipher and read, I've read multiple articles that all kind of state the same thing. Like you're telling me all your stuff leads to you know basically like one or two wide receiver two seasons from. So it's like. This league right. is filled with a bunch of different outliers at a bunch of different positions. Now, yeah, there's, of course, guys, there's the Saquon Barkley's of the world that I don't need you to tell me anything that this guy's awesome. Like the analytics are great and the field, the tape's great. But like guys like Tony who may get a little push are getting pushed down. The NFL is going to see them and they're going to invest capital. And it's not like the NFL gets it right. They miss 50 percent of the first round. So it's like, you know. I just, I, I, like you said, I think this is a great stab uh, to player to take that I'm going to be heavily targeting in the middle of second rounds. And I love putting a guy like this on my team that has the versatility that can do a bunch of different things. Obviously the scheme fit needs to be good as, as does a lot of these guys, but, um, I'm, but I'm willing to wait it out though. You know, we're playing dynasty and I love the skill and the talent of this player. And if he doesn't go to what's considered an awesome landing spot off the rip, I'm not going to let that way too much you know, on me it, when we're talking about a late second round guy with a ceiling that is so high, like just, just what, just take this guy, put him on the bottom of your bench and wait it out because yeah. situations change so much. You know, I, I've that, seen that, him mock to the chiefs. Let's say this guy gets mocked to the chiefs. Now well, we've all been luck. waiting for Nicole Hardman and good luck getting him on your team. Then now I'm you got to spend the top five wider. Now you got to spend wait. a high draft capital on him. And it's and a little I, bit I, of a different story because I just, there are there are some concerns. Well, I don't know if I don't know if I would call them concerns, but there are off the field incidents. Yeah, for sure. Like oh, we, I, I briefly brushed over them, but there are you know we can we can get into it for oh, a little real bit quickly, right? Let's because we like to hit all the all the spots of these players, and we did dive into the the, the character. You know, he so he's he's a rapper, right? Young Joka. I don't know if maybe that's because he's a little bit of a clown or he's pulled some clown incidents, but uh. Coming into Florida as a freshman, um, there was some altercation on campus. Some dude lost some money gambling on the Gators the year before and was talking shit to the players and was like threatening them. It was like he, he ended up leaving and and like was like, I'm coming back with my boys and y'all are getting sprayed. And so like Canaries Tony goes and gets his airsoft gun that's got the orange tip painted black. So it looks like an, uh, an actual rifle, you know air gun shots are fired and the police come and everybody scatters. And, you know, basically the Florida players got suspended for one game. Uh, they don't like to really, you know, Florida, you they, they have some they history some, there. Some yeah. Suspect character coming through Florida. So that, that does, you know, that, that, that raises a little bit of a flag. I'm not too concerned about it a week later. Right. He gets pulled over, which I don't know why he got pulled over, but there was a loaded AR-15, so he upgraded from the airsoft gun to an actual assault rifle. But Florida law dictates that if your uh, rifle is licensed, then there's nothing illegal about it. And so he didn't have any legal charges and didn't have any further right. suspension from that. But it's just worth noting. I don't think I'm going to let any of that weigh into it, especially when we're talking it's, about well, a late it's, round pick. You it's know? Exactly. I was, isn't it already a little built in? You know, right. The risk, the all risk these risks and, and and things that you're worried about. It's a little built in already. So if I'm he all was the in. perfect me player, guy. then he wouldn't be as cheap as he is. And we were looking for these guys, right? We thought we found one in Terrace Marshall, but then all of a sudden his steam is built up so far that now he's a mid to late first round pick. That's not cheap anymore. And but but Tony is still a guy who, you know, is basically the same size as Rashad Batman. Uh, he's just the Joker. And so, uh, you know, I'm not saying take him over over Batman, but... Do you want to know uh, how I got these? <laughs> oh, what a great movie. My just watched it last night. Was a drinker. <laughs> and a anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to like, subscribe, so that you when we start doing all these rookie mocks and start getting these guys in order, we're, we're nearing the end of our player breakdowns. Let's... Let's get some subscribed action going on and let's get rookie mocks rolling and then we'll move to regular mocks so you can get in all that and see where all these guys end up falling for us. And 
Uh, the guys that we didn't necessarily break down, I'm sure we'll spend some time talking about what we like and what we don't like after they're drafted to teams in the NFL. Right. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and if you're interested in joining us in these mock drafts, head on over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty. Um, we got other extra content there. Big Co's put a bunch, uh, uh, a lengthy trade strategy episode or two out there that, that, uh, people have really been loving. And we've got, uh, you know, like we said, mock drafts coming at you that Discord we're doing channel rolling. Patreons. Um, Discord, right? Got a great chat, bunch of different channels that we keep on the down low. You got to be, got to be a pleasure Chester to get access to all that. So uh, head on over there. And if you just, you know, if you don't want to join that and you're listening on the, on the podcast, hit us with that five star review on the iTunes. That would be spectacular too. Hey, we appreciate you guys for joining us and we will see you next time for your pleasure. <laughs>